So the first of these is this trend that we're seeing towards the democratization of, of luxury, which in some senses almost sounds counterintuitive, um, and then the, the rise of essentialism. So I'm going to turn to you, um, Martina, first, if that's OK, uh, to ease us into this topic. Um, I know that democratizing luxury brands is not necessarily a new theme. It's always been important for luxury brands to appeal to a much broader audience than the actual mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. purchaser of the brand. Um, but how has this changed and accelerated over the last couple of years? What, what are we seeing in this space? Yeah, that's a, that's a great question. And in this particular trend, I'm going to be unpacking a lot of sort of like abstract concepts, but mm. they all are tied together in a, in a very sort of simple and, and logical way. So one of the things you mentioned is democratization of luxury. And another thing that is adjacent concept to it is diversification of luxury. And the other one is the rise of luxury essentialism. So I'm not just essentially going to explain what that means. Um, you touched upon the, the sort of shifting values and um, you talked about the rise of digital and, and the importance of e-commerce, but uh, hand in hand with that actually goes the, the rapid change in lifestyle and the shift in terms of what we value as human beings, which really has come to the forefront of the discussion and has been greatly accelerated by the COVID pandemic last year. So what we essentially are, are seeing right now with this greater democratization of luxury, the 24 seven on demand, right? Access to e-commerce, uh, but also lux uh, greater disposable income um, of a much greater mass of people. Uh, we are seeing uh, people being designing luxury products and services much more than in the past. That's one thing. Another thing is then uh, the need for luxury brands uh, to become more relevant and desirable and profitable to cater to these uh, bigger audiences to diversify their own offering and create a larger scale of what is considered luxury, right? So what we are seeing right now in the luxury market is essentially that everything almost has become luxury. Luxury through premiumization can be a pair of sneakers. It can be a frozen dinner from Marks and Spencer or Tesco finest collection, right? So we see consumer goods and utilities become premiumized and luxurified, if you will. But that goes throughout the entire market through Masti, through, um, let's say, more affordable luxury brands like uh, like Louis Vuitton, for example, uh, all the way to super luxury, transcendental, transformative, private, seclusory experiences. Mm -hmm. So essentially, the entire market has become luxurified. What this means for the very proposition of luxury is that if everything is luxury, nothing is luxury. So, <laughs> so we are sort of had, having this conundrum, which is, well, if everything has become luxury, where do we go next? And now count in the COVID pandemic, uh, the need to cater to a much larger group of people, but also through completely different channels through e-commerce, which again poses a sort of a threat or a challenge to luxury, which is historically very sensory, haptic, right? Experience. It's all about the touch and feel and the, the, the emotions. So how do you recreate a desirability through e-commerce? Um, so what we're essentially witnessing now is that luxury as a concept or as a narrative needs to be evolved to become more relevant to, um, to the needs of people in the 21st century. Mm -hmm. So this has been very much accelerated through the COVID pandemic. It has been a little bit happening even before the pandemic for the last 10, five more, uh, but 10 years in the past.